This video is made using Midjourney's latest version, and today we'll teach you how to make one just like it. Midjourney's version 5.2 just came out, and this video will be your ultimate guide to help you get the most out of these brand new features that could put you in the top tier of Midjourney creators. You'll learn tips and tricks like how to make animated videos with your art, add numbers and text to your images, and we'll uncover some other features you probably didn't even know existed. Hi everyone, and welcome to AI Art Academy, your go-to place for all things AI art. Today is exciting because Midjourney just released what might be the final update we get until the highly anticipated version 6. We're expecting v6 later this summer, so make sure to subscribe for our upcoming tutorial. We'll be releasing it as soon as v6 goes live. And even though version 6 is right around the corner, 5.2 just gave us 5 brand new features that are all worth using. So let's explore what each one has to offer, when you'd want to use them, and then let's cover some of the coolest examples out there so far. The first feature is the shorten command. If you're like me, you've probably written paragraph long prompts and without really knowing which words are actually making a difference in the output. And with the new shorten command, Midjourney will show you which words are being used, which aren't, and how much weight each word has in the image. This feature is perfect for eliminating the words that don't provide any value and gives you clear and concise prompts. And did you know if you can become a prompt crafting genius, you can make thousands of dollars a month selling AI art prompts? Hundreds of people are already doing this, so once you clean up your prompts with this tool, watch our video and learn how you can do the same. Okay, but let's try out this new command. We'll use a prompt we previously used in our original v5 guide, and that's another video link in the description. So this prompt is incredibly long, and as I was making it, I figured a lot of words were kind of pointless. But when I used slash shorten and input my prompt, Midjourney crossed out a bunch of words and gave me five new prompts that were a lot shorter than the original. The shocking part was that Midjourney crossed out Studio Ghibli art style. And for those who don't know, Studio Ghibli is a Japanese animation company, and here are some of their images so you can get a sense of their style. As you can see, my original images had the Studio Ghibli style. But to my surprise, the five new prompts from Midjourney didn't include any mention of Studio Ghibli, and when I clicked the Show Details button, Midjourney showed the most value words, and Studio Ghibli wasn't anywhere to be found. But I tried each of the five prompts by clicking the blue buttons for each one, and as you can see, all five prompts were very similar to each other and the original image. I was pretty surprised by this because in the last V5 update, Midjourney said writing prompts like you would in school would help give you a more predictable image, but this kind of contradicts this because most of the filler words were completely neglected anyways. Either way, I'm just happy we now have a tool that tells us which words are worth using. But the next feature is what has people the most excited. If you used the popular AI tool Dolly before, the new Midjourney zoom out feature works just like Dolly's outpainting and it lets you take an existing AI image and expand it using prompts. And if you're like me, you're probably taking your Midjourney images, pasting them into Dolly, and then using the outpainting feature because until now, Midjourney did not have any image altering capabilities. If you want to learn more about Dolly and how it stacks up to Midjourney, check out our Midjourney Dolly and Stable Diffusion comparison linked in the description. But let's see if the zoom out feature will finally provide all the editing in house. For this first picture, I thought it'd be fun to have a blast from the past and start with Where's Waldo. To get started, you'll need to run a job in Midjourney that gives you a starting image, and it has the upscale and variation buttons underneath because the zoom out feature only works with upscaled images. Once you have your original set of four images, click the upscale button for the picture you want to use. Then you'll see that there's three zoom out options which are 1.5, 2x, and custom zoom. With the 1.5 and 2x options, Midjourney will automatically fill in the surroundings using the same prompt. But when you use a custom option, you can change the prompt completely. Using a new prompt will still keep the original image as your base, and the new prompt is used for the new surroundings going forward. So let's take a look. When we click on the 2x option, we get four new images that all have the original image in the center with slightly different surroundings on the outside. And even though we can only zoom out 2x at most with each new image, we can keep repeating these steps as much as you want and zoom out as far as we want. So after scaling out this picture multiple times, I was left with this image. And for old time's sake, let's see if you can find Waldo. Did you find him? But what happens if you want a background that doesn't really go along with the initial image or its prompt? For this next example, let's look at the custom zoom out option, which is much more similar to Dolly's outpainting. My starting picture was this colorful eye, and I wanted the viewer to be surprised by the image as we zoomed out and the picture told more of a story. For the first step, I wanted to scale it out from an eye to show a drawing of a person on a canvas, so that's what I changed the prompt to in the customization field. Then for the next couple of zoom outs, I used the 2x button and Midjourney zoomed out with the new prompt. Something to note is when you use a new prompt in the customization field, all 1.5 and 2x zooms will use the most recent prompt rather than the original. So once the drawing was completed, I wanted the new image to show a robot as the creator of the drawing, and as you can see, Midjourney crushed it. Then for the last thing I wanted the final picture to show the robot in a room full of art, and voila. Pretty cool finished product, right? For the full effect, I even turned these images into a video for free, and here's how you can do the same. First take your images from Midjourney and download them onto your phone. Next you'll download the free mobile app CapCut, 
and upload all your images into the new project. Make sure to order your images starting with your most zoomed out image and ending with your original zoomed in image. Then add two page breaks to each one by moving the line to the beginning and end of each image and clicking this diamond button that you see here. For the second page break in each image, zoom in until your current image is nearly the same size as the start of the next one. See how when I scroll from this image to the next that they look pretty similar? Repeat this process for all images and your final video will look like a zoom in video. So how do we get it to zoom out? To reverse it, I ended up using a different app since CapCut's reverse feature wasn't working for me. This is actually a pretty common glitch, so if it does work for you, just tap this reverse button right here in the edit section, but if it doesn't, I found the media.io reverse video editor, which does the same thing. It's only available on desktop, however, so I downloaded my original video from CapCut, uploaded it to media.io, and in seconds I had this finished product. I even turned it into YouTube short. So could this be the beginning of more advanced editing mid-journey features? Only time will tell, but currently this is a good first step for mid-journey to compete with Adobe Firefly's generative fill. We'll be doing a generative fill versus zoom out video in the near future, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. The next feature that 5.2 has to offer is the high variation tool. In previous versions, mid-journey variations were sometimes so similar to the point where it felt like you really just got four copies of the same image. But now, the new high variation tool gives you more control. It's important to note that this feature is only available on upscaled images, so once you're ready to go, you can choose between a strong variation button and a subtle variation button. I used both buttons on the image I already have, and you can probably guess which group of images was done with the strong variations and which one was done with the subtle variations. As you can see, there's just pretty stark differences between the two variations. Up next is the raw parameter, which isn't necessarily new to 5.2, but it's one of Midjourney's hidden gems. Before this tool was released, Midjourney's text and numbers looked like an alien language, but that's a thing of the past. The raw parameter essentially tells Midjourney to use a literal interpretation of your prompt instead of just using words as inspiration. And for the first example, let's make something simple like the number 100,000. My prompt was quote, one, and then spaces between all the zeros, end quote, neon sign. This result is pretty great, right? Now some images still came out messed up, but this sign would be nearly impossible to make out without the raw parameter. Plus, raw can also help with text. For example, I decided to make a sign with the word happy and my prompt was, quote, happy, end quote, neon sign, and this is what I got. This was the second try making this, and while raw isn't perfect yet, it will only improve. Make sure when using this prompt, you add space between the characters or numbers and quotation marks around the word or number you're trying to make. And then to use the raw parameter, you're gonna type in dash dash raw at the end of each prompt. And now the raw parameter works well for numbers and text on their own, and it can even work as part of a bigger image. Creating an image without text and using a different tool like Photoshop or Canva to add it is still probably easier, but it's good to see Midjourney working to improve in this area. The last feature I want to talk about is the video feature. Now some of you who've used Midjourney for a while might remember this parameter in the earlier versions, but it was discontinued back in V3. But like the McRib, it's back. This parameter is simple, and it shows you a video of your images being rendered. Now if you're wondering why you would need something like this, it's because this video could be used like a time lapse, or you could loop it for the ultimate artistic experience. To use it, just type in dash dash video at the end of your original prompt. Once you get your set of four images, click the react button and select the envelope emoji. You'll get your video down at the bottom, and for now you can still only get a video of all four images being rendered at once, rather than for each individual image. This is kind of annoying, but it's a good sign that Midjourney's working on its video capabilities. Okay, so that wraps up our Midjourney V5.2 guide, and now you should be ready to start creating. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more Midjourney guides just like this one. We here at AI Art Academy, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.